What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here. We've got some interesting news in the world of Tekken. Two tweets came out recently, one from Harada and one from Michael Murray, stating some pretty interesting new information. The tweet from Harada says, He's the general manager of developing and producing Bandai Namco original titles from this term, including Tekken, Ace Combat, the Tales of series, Dark Souls, Soul Calibur, etc. And he will continue being the esports strategy leader. And basically what this means is that he's now overseeing all of Namco's different IPs, keeping track and managing how they make stuff, how they show stuff. Basically it's a big promotion and it's really awesome to see. If you've paid attention to all the work he's done, you understand why he earned this promotion. All the work he's done on Tekken, which is probably Namco's most successful franchise, he's helped building closer bonds to other companies like Nintendo, Square Enix, and even Capcom through his friendship with Ono. Not to mention building Namco's advances in VR with Summer Lesson, making their relationship with Nintendo even stronger with Pokken, and to help prevent Dragon Ball Fighters from only being a one-time thing in the esports scene by becoming the strategy leader. And the list goes on, there's so many things this man has done, or at least helped do. And I could honestly see him even becoming the president of Bandai Namco sometime in the future. And then we come to Michael Murray's tweet. Woke up this morning and reached 10,000 followers. Also, officially from April, I am the main producer on the Tekken franchise. This includes stuff in Japan, the merchandising, every single thing related to the IP. So he's looking forward to interactions with us. So congratulations to them both. They both worked really hard and both deserve these new promotions and positions in the company. For those who don't know, Michael Murray is Harada's translator, the cool dude that's always palling around with him. He's been working on the Tekken series since Tekken 4, one of the best ones story-wise. And starting at Tekken 6, he moved up to game design, so he definitely has plenty of experience with the series, both story-wise and gameplay-wise. So where on earth does Tekken go from here? Now, I am not good at the game, so I'm not going to be commenting on gameplay or how esports stuff should go, how it should be balanced, etc. I'm not talking about that, as you can see by my footage here. I'm not the best player. I'm not fit to talk about this stuff. What I want to talk about is when it comes to story and characters. Because it's going to be really interesting to see how a more Western influence affects Tekken's story. Typically in Japanese fighting games, they follow similar stuff. It has to do with some kind of evil corporation. You know, Tekken with the Mishima Zaibatsu and G Corporation, Street Fighter with Shadaloo, King of Fighters with Nests. Meanwhile, the other regions have stuff like Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct that have to do with all this crazy, otherworldly, cool stuff. So it's going to be super interesting to see if Tekken stays where it is, focusing on the war between the Zaibatsu and G Corporation, or if it leans more towards focusing on the Devil Gene, the evil spirit that took over Jinpachi, Ogre, all this mysterious otherworldly paranormal stuff. Now most of this is going to be a matter of opinion, where I personally want the story to go, or what I would like to see happen in the story. But first I want to state a fact, something that needs to be done with the characters. And that is, the characters need to be characters. When Kazuya finally killed Heihachi at the end of Tekken 7, ending this 40 plus year long struggle he's been going through, I expected him to fall to his knees and scream out to the sky in victory and joy, just demolishing the rest of the volcano with his raw power and energy. But no, instead Kazuya just kinda stood over Heihachi's dead corpse and stared at him weirdly like it didn't affect his life in any way. The Tekken characters as of late have just kind of lacked emotion and development beyond punching someone really hard and then giving a cheeky overconfident grin. I'm pretty sure you can make a compilation of Heihachi punching someone and then cocking his head back and going, huh. Meanwhile, if you go back to Tekken 4 and look at all the various endings, there's just so much emotion to be found. Jin is nearly brought to tears when he sees a vision of his mother. Kazuya is actually shocked to see his son chained up in Heihachi's ending. Because, I mean, at that time, Kazuya has no reason to hate Jin. He's just the other half of the Devil Gene. He's his son. And it's that way with the other characters, too. In Tekken 4, King is more emotional, sparing Craig Marduk's life and realizing that killing him over Armor King just isn't worth it. And then Steve and Nina especially, they just look at each other and they know each other and have this moment, but don't have any time to process anything before they both have to split up. They just get a quick glimpse of each other, hoping that one day they'll get to patch things up in the future and figure things out. Meanwhile in Tekken 7, Nina is just stone cold, doesn't care about his existence at all, and just kind of shrugs Steve off as more of a burden than anything. It was kind of sad. So that's a fact right there, the Tekken characters need to be more emotionally vulnerable to development, and they need to be more expressive. And what about the plot itself? What do I want to see happen? What do I think is the best way to go in terms of the story? Well, the ending of Tekken 7 sets up two things. Jin is now the protagonist, and his main goal is taking down Kazuya once and for all. 
And the second thing it sets up is that Jin has now taken full control of the Devil Gene. He's done trying to get rid of it or thinking of it as a curse, and he now accepts it and is taking advantage of this power. So there's a lot of directions you could go from here. Now, of course, for Tekken 8, you could do the simple thing and have the entire plot of that game dedicated to Jin taking down Kazuya, but it would just feel like a repeat of Tekken 7, just with roles switched around. So instead for Tekken 8, I think they should do something very similar that a super big movie did this year. Not saying which and have the villain taken down within the first 10 to 15 minutes. And then a time skip. So basically, Jin is done wasting time. He's not going to be in charge of the Zaibatsu or G-Corp now or any sort of corporation. He's just trying to right the wrongs that he caused. So he's out, trying to kill Kazuya as fast as he can, now that he has full control of the Devil Gene, and he can do it. He defeats Kazuya, fairly quickly. Jin then goes on to spend the rest of his life eliminating and taking down all these weird dark entities and cool new supernatural things. And what this does is give Michael Murray a fresh template and a lot of freedom to work with when it comes to the story. The whole corporation aspect is gone, Jin is off fighting supernatural dark creatures so he could do something with that, or make the plot go somewhere else and focus on something else. And with the time skip, he can come up with a bunch of new original characters on his own to create and build a new story, like Tekken 3 did after Tekken 2. You could have Jin and Shaiyu have a kid now, because that's been building up for like five games. Make it happen, please, Michael. Jin and Shao is the best ship. But yeah, he'd get to make a mostly new story, have tons of characters that keep fighting styles of previous characters that we've known and loved, and heck, you could bring in vengeful spirits of Kazuya and Heihachi to haunt Jin so you could keep their fighting styles in the game. But anyways, that's just my idea for ways Michael Murray can make the story better and more interesting, and what he could do in the future to allow the most creative freedom for himself. I'm just really excited to see where the franchise goes in general though, and once again, congratulations to them both. Leopold the Brave, out.